Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today uh, I'm going to make a video. One of the viewers, uh, also person used my referral link, was asking about tips driving home uh, to northern BC from Vancouver. So what kind of things should you consider? That's what this video is going to be about. Probably will help apply to a lot of people who need to drive a long distance from your uh, dealership and it's not specific to Tesla, but there will be some items that are have an emphasis on that just because that's what I drove home. But I drove about 800 plus kilometers. Um, and so I think that's 650 miles, something like that. Anyway, um, so we're going to go over some tips of some things to think about, whether you have a Chevy Bolt, Nissan Leaf, uh, Hyundai Kona, whatever it is. Um, this will hopefully give you some things to think about. So the agenda will be to look at the key steps that you should review before you start your journey home. Um, so some of these things you're gonna have to do before you get to the dealership. So for me, I flew from Prince George uh, to Vancouver and then I drove the car home just because the distance was very far. And so there's a lot of things I had to get lined up for that to be a successful journey. And yes, this was my actual car that I picked up in Vancouver, it's beautiful. Uh, so we'll go over the key steps as a summary, six of them. Then I will do a detailed walkthrough of each one of those steps. Uh, next I will do a sample route plan that I use. So if you are actually driving home from Vancouver to somewhere in northern BC, I'll give you some sort of uh, tips and places that you can stop to charge that I used. Um, and we'll go from there. And then after that I'll talk about some Tesla specific uh, tips, kind of help you further. And then we'll have our conclusion. Okay, so here's the six sort of items in summary. So the first item, bring a checklist so that you can inspect your car to make sure everything is as you expect it to be before you sign papers. Um, so there's a link here. And I'll, when we get to the detail section, we can look at this in more detail. But do the research for your car. Look online. Definitely somebody has made a checklist for the car of things to look over. This is one for the Tesla Model 3. And it just gives you a guideline of things to look for, like were there paint defects? Are there dents somewhere? Is there like some goofy, you know, mirror that's broken or something like that? So it's a really good checklist to go over. Make sure you follow a template so that you know, you know, something hasn't been messed up in your car. You're spending a lot of money, might as well make sure they've done it right. And kind of draw a line in the sand saying, if I have certain kinds of problems, I'm backing out of this. You know, I'm going to make the dealership uh, have to deal with that. So... Anyways, number two, uh, acquire your important accessories ahead of time before you pick up the car. Um, I gave an example of some things I thought of about the Tesla. So if you want your dash cam and your security cameras turned on, you know, like when your car is parked and it's charging and when you're driving on the road, you need to bring some kind of uh, USB drive of some type to make sure that the footage is getting recorded somewhere. It does not work by default. That's one example. Another one for every EV is the adapters that you might need to charge in all the places you're going to go. You know, make sure that you've thought that all through. Um, for the Tesla, you'll maybe need a screen protector for that big screen in case, you know, if you have to slam in your brakes or something and some of the things in the car go flying into the screen, that's not a good, you know, first day uh, car ownership if you destroy the screen. So these are just some things to think about. You know, you do the research, find out what's what's critical. I have some videos where I talked about what was important, what I felt for the Tesla Model 3, but there's many online. So make sure you get some of those things ahead of time. Um, and, and of course, one of those would be some kind of home charging uh, unit. Make sure that you have maybe like a NEMA 1450 plug. It's like a dryer plug so you can uh, charge your car when you get home and, and not you know, spend two or three days charging. With a 1450, oftentimes, you know, in 
in like five to seven hours you can fully charge your car from almost empty so definitely want to get that done ahead of time work with an electrician to do that um, number three make sure you have appropriate tires installed before leaving the area um, I've got some videos here talking about some things for me I just purchased the uh, winter tires from Tesla the tires and rims package and I had them install it and I did this even though it was more expensive to do it that way because I'm from out of town from far away I didn't want to have to deal with third-party vendors and have them mess something up and then now I'm stuck you know eight hours from home and what do I do I didn't want to be in that position so make sure you get the right tires for the time of year because if you're leaving like the Vancouver area going anywhere in the province pretty much you're going to need winter tires in the winter because you're going through mountain passes so just something to think about number four use a better route planner .com. great website use that to pre-plan your trip so you know where you're going to charge where you're going to stop where you're going to get food all that kind of thing uh, and also if you have a tesla make sure you use the energy graph i wish i knew about this when i took my journey home people told me about it afterwards and it's just a real help to know what your real range that you have left on the on your battery charge uh, so that you know you know if you're going to make it to the next charging station or not but uh, hopefully pre-planning will help you avoid you know if you have uh, surprises you know build a buffer into that so anyway we'll talk about that more later prepare for emergencies you know for all teslas and many evs and many new cars in general they don't come with flat tires or spare tires for flats anymore you know how they used to come with a jack and a, one of those cheesy spares a lot of cars don't do that anymore and people don't know this so you know driving home in the winter you drive over a nail or a rock in the road and you get a flat tire in your middle of nowhere not a good situation if you're not prepared so I've got a video on that there's lots of information online make sure you do the research and plan for that because you're doing a long drive here so think ahead and then number six when it comes to charging for all those places you're gonna stop make sure you have what you need in terms of not just the adapters which I already mentioned before but now I'm talking about the apps make sure you install the apps ahead of time on your on your mobile phone make sure you get maybe RFID cards like BC Hydro they have most of the charging stations around the province as soon as you know outside of like the Tesla superchargers which is really only down in the lower mainland highway 1 through Kamloops and all that kind of thing as soon as you go north of Hope there's no more superchargers um, unless you're going to Kamloops but if you go up the Fraser nothing so get an RFID card you can go on BC Hydro's website sign up get one that way if you're at a charging station and there's no cell connection you can use the RFID card and still charge so that's just one thing but worst case if you have the mobile app and you've already installed it you know weeks or days before the day you're picking up maybe the the charging station downloads accounts every day or something like that maybe it's maybe they will know who you are when you hold your phone up to the RFID section of the charging station and maybe it'll work I'm just saying so make sure you look over these six things these are some key things that I thought of um, and I've got I'll have links to all these videos I've talked about some of these in other videos that I've made okay so a detailed walkthrough of these steps all right so a detailed walkthrough of these steps first one is a checklist before you sign off on the paperwork here's an example uh, this Tesla prep uh, document someone built on github this is a collection of input from many many people who have bought model threes you google your EV whether it's a Kona whether it's a leaf or Chevy Bolt or whatever the model is maybe you're getting a Porsche Taycan um, Google you know checklist whatever your model is and I'm sure someone out there has created one and you can see here they talk about things like what is level one charging what is level two charging what is level three charging um, just for information but you know 30 days before your delivery date 10 days seven days um, heading into the delivery center what things you should think about and then your inspection checklist make sure the VIN number on your paperwork matches the VIN number of the car things like that um, and your name and all that kind of thing exterior inspection interior expect inspection lightings um, can the does a car charge with the uh, charging kits that you have um, 
just all those things. So I'm not going to go over all the details, but make sure you have a checklist, you bring it with you, and that you highlight the things that are important to you. There's been reports of people with Model 3s having, uh, when they go to pick it up and they inspect the car, they find out there's like some kind of terrible paint problem with their car. So you can make sure you get it fixed before you drive you know, many hours home and then you have to bring it back to get fixed. That's super annoying. So just some things to look at. So checklist. Number two, acquiring the important accessories ahead of time before you pick up the car. Here's an example. I made a video about um, sentry mode and dash cam and all that kind of thing from Tesla's. Basically, you probably want some kind of uh, dash cam system so that when you drive home, if you get into an accident or rocks hit your car from a logging truck or whatever it is, you want to capture that stuff um, on a dash cam. So for the Teslas, you need to get some kind of a USB or SSD drive, something. This is like the whole hub and a drive, but I have a video that talks about that. Um, some way of having a dash cam, you want your charging system at home. In the picture here, I show a NEMA 1450 right over there. Basically, it's a dryer plug, a 60 amp dryer plug so that you can charge your car when you get home. Make sure you buy the adapters that are required for your car. The Tesla Model 3, for example, does not come with the adapter for that plug. Um, so if you're not getting like this whole Tesla charging unit and you're just getting that plug installed from your electrician, you will need to buy an adapter. And I have a video talking all about that for Teslas as well. Make sure you figure it out how you're gonna charge your car when you get home. All right, so another one, like for Teslas, make sure you get a screen protector for that big 14 inch screen in the middle console there. Um, and just so you don't have any surprises, you have to slam in your brakes and some debris in the car go flying and hit the screen and break it. You really don't want that to happen. And these screen protectors do a really great job just for peace of mind. It's only 20 bucks on Amazon, it's worth it. So those are some accessories, but uh, you do the research for your car um, figure out what are the critical accessories, what adapters do I need to charge all the way home for Teslas, like a Chatamo adapter will be very important for BC uh, because as soon as you go north of Hope, you will need Chatamo adapters for all the BC hydro charging stations. Now, if you're going up to Kamloops, there is a supercharger there and all on Highway 1, the Trans-Canada Highway, there are superchargers, so it's a different story there. And as soon as you leave that section, you're going to need a Chatamo adapter. Okay, um, and a NEMA 1450 adapter, I would say, because with a NEMA 1450, you can charge at any person's house using a dryer plug or at a campsite that has the RV plugs, whatever. So just really good to have those things. Okay, so accessories, figure out what you need ahead of time. Bring them with you down there. Uh, number three, make sure you have the appropriate tires installed. Here's a great video from Sean Mitchell where he talks about um, what summer tires he found are great for the Model 3, what winter tires he found are great. Multitudes of videos online talking about great tires for your EV. Do the research, find out what, what you're gonna get. What I would say about this one is, for me, I flew in from Vancouver, um, or sorry, from Prince George to Vancouver, and that's like a nine hour drive with a normal gasoline vehicle. And I didn't want to play games. I bought the winter tire package, as you see here on the screen. It's 2000 bucks. You get four rims and four winter tires. And, you know, the rims are not so heavy. They're kind of lighter for the electric vehicle, so it's okay for range. But they're also, I believe they're metal rims. Because in the winter time, if you had like aluminum or something, some other kind of metal that could shrink a lot when it gets really cold and you can lose air in your tires, so make sure you get the right rims and tires for the conditions you're driving in. Tires make a big difference, uh, especially when you're driving a long distance. So make sure you plan that. For me, I had them installed pre-done so that when I got there, everything was ready to go. It took me one hour to sign the paperwork, get my orientation, and I was gone home. Um, okay, so tires. Next one is use a better route planner to pre-plan your trip home. Build in redundancies. So that's that's this website here. Um, so you go to a betterrouteplanner.com and you know you get something like this section here. You plug in where you're starting from, where your destination is. In this case, I'm starting at Tesla Motors in Vancouver, and my position, which is here home in Prince George, 
you pick your model it'll you know in this drop down you can pick all the different manufacturers what your ev model is make sure you pick the right one with the right wheels because it all makes a difference so i picked tesla model 3 long range all-wheel drive aero 18 inch because remember i told you got the winter package here these are the aero 18 inch plugged all that in then make sure you fill out as many of these details as you can so some of these get pre-populated but i'll point out some important ones max speed I plugged in, I think it defaults to 150 kilometers an hour as the max speed. Well, I'm not going to drive that fast. I picked 130. You might pick 120, 100, whatever it is. Plug in your max speed there that you're willing to drive for that journey home. Uh, come down here. You might have to click show more settings to see some of these other sections. Temperature outside. I picked minus 20 Celsius. That's, you know, kind of extreme cold, extreme-ish. Uh, I picked under road conditions, you know, not dry, not rain or snow, heavy rain and snow. I picked worst case scenario. Uh, then for the fast chargers that you're going to use for your drive home. For a Tesla Model 3, you pick Supercharger and you pick uh, Chatamo. Those two. You do not pick Tesla CCS. That's for like Europe. Um, and I, I'm not sure if the Model S and X would work for that. There might be an adapter for that, but not your Model 3. So you cannot pick CCS. And I would I advise against picking Level 2 Charger. It's quite a bit slower. In a pinch you could use that but and, and the uh, Model 3 does come with that level 2 adapter but it's a lot slower. So I picked these two for your your Leaf, your Kona or whatever you'll probably pick CCS. Maybe Chatamo as well if you have that but probably CCS. Maybe level 2. Plug in the chargers that you have adapters for that your car supports. Then click plan route and once you've plugged all that in, you know, it gives you a suggestion of how you're going to be able to get home. Click this section up here, and it gives you all the stats, you know. You're starting with this much charge. Uh, you get to Hope BC. You uh, arrive with 55% charge. You depart with 93% charge. You're stopping at the supercharger for 22 minutes. This is how much it's going to cost you at the supercharger. And on and on. It gives you all the stats. And you can tweak that to your liking you can right click if you don't want to stop at for example if you don't want to stop at Williams Lake you want to stop at 100 mile you can click that one and tell it make that a waypoint I want to charge there and it'll do adjustments and and whatnot anyway so really great website use this website it gives tells you you know starting percentage and I, I advise never arrive with less than 20% charge. You could go to 15. If you have a Model 3, you could probably get to 10%. A lot of people will do that, but if it's really cold outside, you're playing with fire. That's what I would say. If there's any kind of emergency or anything like that, you could be in trouble. Plan backups. You know, if I arrive somewhere and there's like five other EVs charging there, what am I going to do? You know, am I going to go to like, is there a hotel I can go to to plug into? get some kilometers, could I call someone there and plug into a dryer, plug, pay someone some money, figure out what you're going to do. That's why if you build in more of a buffer and not arrive with such a small amount of charge, maybe you can move on to the next charging station. Maybe that ch charging station you want to stop at isn't working, right? you got to build in all that's, those buffers. Okay, so that is using a better route planner. Next thing we'll talk about is the energy graph. And with that, I'll go out to the car and show you, when it comes to the Tesla, why the energy graph is so awesome to use. All right, guys, let's take a look here. You can see the car's charging. This is the Tesla charger. These chargers, you just have to push this button to have it open and close this door, and also to start and stop the charging. So when it's green, it's charging. When it turns blue, it's no longer charging. And uh, of course I have, in my other video, I showed the uh, NEMA 1450 and the Tesla charger over there. It's a 20 foot cable so that I can sling it all the way around here so I can park the car the way I want in the garage. Now, let's take a look at the energy graph, which is very good to use when you're going on a long journey. So, how do we get to the energy graph? Okay, so you click on this button here then you'll get over to energy and there's two tabs okay so the first tab is sort of you know the last up to 50 kilometers that you've been driving um, 
and you can have average, instant, whatever. I pick average. So you can see here, it says 330 kilometers is what it says based on the way I drive, that's how much range I have. Whereas up here, it says 463 kilometers or 90% charge. So based on the weather, etc., that's the range. Now, if I go to do a trip, if I plugged into here, you know, using the navigation, if I went, let's try this out. Let's say I go, okay, close all this. I want to navigate to, well, let's say Quesnel. Let's say I want to drive to Quesnel from Prince George. So I type that in. It believes that's where I'm going to drive to, and it says, okay, it's going to take 132 kilometers, blah, blah. So now, if I go to that energy graph, so I click this little icon here, like energy graph, click trip. Okay, so it says, I'm going to start off with 90% charge, and by the time you make it to the place you have in the, to Quesnel, you're going to have 65% charge. And it looks at terrain, it looks at my driving habits, all that kind of thing. Use the energy graph. And as I'm driving, you know, you can check this out every once in a while if you have a really long trip. You know, based on how you're driving, you're like pounding it, going up in the mountain passes and stuff, you're using a lot more energy than normal. You can take a look and see, because it adjusts as you drive. So, energy graph, use it. All right, uh, so we just looked at the energy graph. Uh, number five, prepare for emergencies. Um, no flat tire or, or no spare tire for a flat, no jack. Um, let's take a look at that. Where do I, right here. So, um, <clears throat> like I mentioned before, uh, a lot of newer cars, definitely all the Teslas, not sure about the Kona, the Leaf, and the others, but I would I would think that they're probably very similar to save weight, save space, all that kind of thing. A lot of them do not come with spare tires. So I made this little video because I noticed a lot of people online talking about their experiences of getting a flat tire and how it becomes a complete disaster for them. Well, if you're driving, you know, 11, 12 hours, even nine hours, seven hours, five hours, four hours, do you really want to go unprepared for a flat tire? Um, I didn't. So this uh, website here, modernspare.com, created a video. Um, they have like a, this little kit that you have zipped up here in this nylon bag and it comes with like a spare tire for the Model 3 with a jack, with all the sockets and everything you need to do your change if you get a flat. So basically what I'm trying to say is for your long journey, be prepared for a flat. At the bare minimum, get yourself like, uh, you know, a air compressor and some kind of like that goo stuff that you can like attach to the uh, the air inlet of your tire and fill it with uh, goop that maybe will patch a small uh, hole in your tire if you get that kind of a flat. But again. For me personally, I would go for like a full spare tire. You're prepared for it. You're going on a long trip and, you know, there's always that chance you get yourself a flat and should be a simple fix. But again, because the, the car doesn't come with a spare, you should do something to prepare for that. Um, do I have another video talking about that? I don't think so. No. Okay, so prepare for emergencies such as flat tires. Get a solution for yourself. And then the last one is getting an RFID card, BC Hydro RFID card, just so that when you stop at those non-Tesla stations to charge, which is basically everything north, again, north of Hope, when you're going up the Fraser Canyon, um, if any of those charging stations happen to be in a region where there's no cell connection, um, how are you going to communicate with your mobile phone to the charging station in order so it knows who you are so you can be, you know, authenticate with the BC Hydro charger. Well, that's why if you get an RFID card, you don't need a cell connection. You just hold it up and it uses RFID and authenticates you and your Bob's your uncle. 
you're good to go. Um, but the other thing is to make sure that you install mobile applications. Definitely the BC Hydro mobile app, maybe PlugShare, maybe ChargePoint. Those are definitely a bunch that I would install. Make sure you have an account and make sure they're set up so that you have a credit card on account so um, it's all good to go. Um, what do I have based on those? I think I've created, yeah, I created this video uh, where I drive from Vancouver to Prince George. And uh, this part of the video here I show, this is like the Tesla charger in Hope. So it's like a supercharger. And really all you have to do is the, right there where, where I have the mouse, there's a little button. You push that button, your charge port opens, you plug it in, and Tesla knows who you are, and they'll just charge your account. Uh, pretty simple to deal with. If it's a non-Tesla charger, I'm going to try to fast forward in this video. Yeah, so in this video, this is a BC Hydro charging station. And you see how they show a little icon of a little hand with uh, this RFID card. And essentially, that's why I say get your BC Hydro card because you can just hold it up there, good to go. And if you don't have the card, you have to hold your app, or sorry, hold your phone up to there and it uses the near field communication feature as if your phone was the RFID card. And if you have the app and you've already created an account with BC Hydro, it authenticates you and you're good to go. So I have a video talking about how these machines work. It's this video here. I show all the way going from Vancouver to Prince George how I charge, so you can watch that one. If you want to see exactly how it works, I'm not going to repeat that in this video. Just want you to be aware. Get an RFID card or at the minimum install the mobile apps. The uh, BC Hydro one, SharePoint, or sorry, Plug Share, and ChargePoint. Those three are, are important apps to install. Create accounts on their website. Get a credit card on there and you should have a lot less hassle. Okay, so those are, and this video here, um, so the video I was just showing you, in this video there's Tesla charging, there's BC Hydro charging, there's Ministry of Transportation charging, that's the 100 mile house station that I charged at. That one you didn't need any card at all, you just push a bunch of buttons, you don't get charged anything and off you go. BC Hydro is free right now, so you still have to authenticate with them, you still need the account. Um, and beyond that, this video, uh, this J1772 charge point at UNBC video, I actually show the process of using a charge point charger. So you can look at those videos. I will link them in the description of this video if you want to see more details, but that's not the purpose of this video. It's just to tell you things to think about. All right, so those are sort of the detailed walkthrough of these six steps. Let's see what's next. All right, so the next next item that I was going to talk about is I was going to take you through a sample route plan that I used to drive home from um, Vancouver to Prince George. And I used a better route planner. We'll go there in a second and I'll show you how I did that. But uh, I used that. But I also wrote down um, sort of my my plan manually here. I just used uh, Google Keep, sort of like a notepad to keep track of all the places that I plan to charge. I just want to go through this list first before I actually go to the website and show you um, how I used it and how I mapped out the plan. So I used a better route planner to build this text list. So my first place was Vancouver. I'm driving from Vancouver to Hope. 152 kilometers should take one hour, 43 minutes, okay? Then I stop at number two, which is Hope, BC, okay? Um, and at Hope, BC, that's where I'm going to charge with the supercharger, blah, blah, blah. The next leg was going to be Hope, BC, traveling to Cache Creek. And that would be, that's basically probably the most sketchiest part of this drive. Fraser Canyon, anyone who lives in BC knows that's a pretty sketchy area to drive, especially in the winter. can be pretty bad. They have, you know, possible avalanches and all that kind of stuff. 
Anyway, um, 193 kilometers through that stretch, two hours and 15 minutes. And the charging station, this was the address in Cache Creek. So it's a BC Hydro charging station. It has um, these types of adapters, CCS, SAE, CHATMO. It's a BC Hydro EV charging station, 50 kilowatt. And if for some reason I couldn't, I can't stop there because like, let's say I get there and, and the station isn't working. Or let's say I get there and there's like a lineup of other electric vehicles that are waiting to charge. If I don't want to wait, if I've built enough buffer, I can go another, what, 40 kilometers if I left myself enough buffer and I can drive on to Clinton. So Clinton, another 43 kilometers after um, Hope. So this is what I mean about building in sort of uh, backup plans. So I could go to Clinton, which has a BC Hydro charging station, and I could charge there. And here's the address of it. It's also BC Hydro 50 kilowatt. Okay, so I gave myself kind of two options. Once I leave Hope, I can stop at Cash Creek. I could stop at Clinton. There are other charging station options, but I don't believe they're DC fast charging, so it would take a lot longer to charge. So in a pinch, you could pull up the map and grab something else, but this was sort of my main plan for after hope. Then on to number three. So let's assume I stopped at Cache Creek. I could then stop at 70 Mile House if I wanted to. That's uh, 71 kilometers away, so not very far. 47-minute uh, drive, and here's all the stats. 70-mile uh, house, it's, again, CCS, SAE, CHATMO, BC Hydro, 50 kilowatt. Let's move on to the next slide. Um, and that was at Ca Cash Creek to 70-mile house. Let's say I didn't want to go to 70-mile house because I was at Cash Creek and I want to go further, which is what I would want to do. I would want to go less charges, longer distance, stuff like that. So I could go Cache Creek to Williams Lake. Um, I could go Cache Creek to 100 Mile House, a whole bunch of things like that. When I put the, these items together, 100 Mile House charging station was not available. After I built this list, 100 Mile House came online. So in the end, I decided to stop at 100 Mile House because it was between 70 Mile House and Williams Lake. Williams Lake, at the time of my drive, did not have a fast charging station. That was online. Um, okay. Yeah, this, uh, anyway. Yeah, it's there's a BC Hydro station, but it wasn't online. Um, if for some reason, after Williams Lake, I needed to charge somewhere else i just wrote down where are the other fast chargers there's this australian rest area that's what that's what it's called the australian and uh apparently there's a charging station there or and then another spot i charged at was quinell so quinell has a charging station i put the address there and i also get the coordinates so i can punch that into i can send those coordinates from from uh my cell phone to the Tesla, and so that prepares the battery when I get close to the charging station. Or here's another one, Hickson. Right, so I wrote down some backups, and then after after any one of these, basically my next leg would be all the way home, and then I'd start charging at home. So I have the text plan with backups. Let's go to let's go to a better route planner and take a look at the journey that I took. All right, let's maximize this. So, kind of showed before how to use a better route planner in general. You plug in, you know, the car that you have, where you want to drive from and to, maximum speed, show more settings, temperature, heavy rain, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And collapses. And it spits out a path. Now, if you know this the path that I took um, I just want to show here all these gray items in here even if I like scroll in here you can see there's these gray items these are other possible places you can charge okay so you can see there's there's a lot of them here so for me this is the path I took 
If you decide, for example, hey, you know, once I get to Cache Creek, I want to stop at Spence's Bridge and I want to charge there. You know, so you click on that gray icon and you can select add this charger as a waypoint and it's going to force the route to, to use that location as a charging station. So you can do that. I just wanted to point that out. But the route that I took, coming back, Vancouver to Hope. Then I went from Hope to Cache Creek, you know, through the Fraser Canyon. Then I went to 100 Mile House, so that was, you know, I tried not to go much more than 2 to 250 kilometers each leg. That gave me plenty of buffer with my 518 kilometer range, which is, you're never going to get that full range, definitely not in the winter time. Probably I would get something more like 380 in the winter maximum from pushing it, which is what I know now. Um, but anyway, I stopped at 100 Mile House, charged there for 42 minutes, you know, right across the road, there's subway and all that stuff. Then after that, I drove 127 kilometers to Quesnel. Um, I charged for more than 15 minutes in Quesnel. Uh, just to give myself a nice big buffer to get home. Um, I actually ended up getting dinner there. A really nice restaurant right across the road from the BC Hydro Charging Station. Um, so I think I charged up to 80 or 90%, something like that. But of course, you don't have to charge as long as I did. You'll get home even faster. Um, so here you can see if I charged from 35 to 48%, I would get home with 10%. I wanted more buffer than that. Um, so... Anyways, um, yeah, so that was the path that I took in the winter time that would work for you. You can pick and choose different spots. Make sure you know where your backup plans will be. So for example, here's Hope. You know, here's uh, a charging station at, uh, where is this? Somewhere near Boston Bar. Okay, in Boston Bar. There's another one here. Where is this one? Spence's Bridge. And after Spence's Bridge, there's Clinton. There's 70 Mile House. There's Williams Lake. You know, and by the time you guys watch this video, Hicks in. And I think it doesn't show here, but I believe south of Quinell. Somewhere, there's a rest stop called the Australian, somewhere around here. It's not showing on this map right now. But there is a fast charger coming in here somewhere. So, anyway, just, just to show you that more options are coming. Um, so, you know, that'll get you to Prince George. And Prince George apparently is getting a DC fast charger from BC Hydro around May of 2020. So couple months from now from when I made this video and that will be at Superstore and the location is perfect in Prince George there's all kinds of shopping around the area and restaurants and all kinds of things so it's great um, but let's say you needed to travel north of Prince George there's really not too many options so just be aware of that maybe it'll change by the time you watch this video but you know the city of Mackenzie for example their city council voted down getting a DC fast charger. So um, I'm not sure what's going on. Chetwind, there's nothing in town. Just south of town, there's a campsite that has NEMA 15 or NEMA 1450 plugins. You have to, if you want to charge going north of town, that's kind of your only option. And it's getting pretty sketchy to the end of, of the range, even of my long range Model 3. And in the winter, I could make it to that campsite, but I would need to then charge there for many hours just to get maybe to Dawson Creek. And then Dawson Creek, again, only has J1772 chargers, not the fastest. So, you know, it's going to get difficult if you need to travel. You're going to have to stop for much longer to charge once you go north of Prince George, at least as of the time of the making of this video. Going west, I think it's going to get really good this year. There's a lot of uh, chargers getting put in from the... Um, Northern District Initiatives, something, NDIT. There's a news article talking about uh, 
expansion of charging stations that way. If you want to go east of town, there's McBride, there's Valemont, and I believe something new is coming in in Jasper soon. Um, and you can go down through Highway 5 to Blue River and other places. A lot of options that way, just north. At this time, there's really not much. So if you want to go up to Alaska, you can, but you're going to have to do some very careful planning. Maybe stop at campsites to plug into their RV plugs to charge. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so that is a sample. Um, taking you through a better route planner and what I used. Let's talk about some Tesla specific tips now. So if you have a Tesla, a couple other things to, to consider for a journey like this is uh, right off the bat, you're going to want to spend some time getting used to brake regeneration. Now, I guess this first point actually isn't specific to a Tesla. It's pretty much all EVs have regen. And what regen is, it's when you take your foot off the accelerator pedal. By default, um, a lot of these cars will slow down very quickly, almost as if you're applying the brakes. It feels very much like that, aggressively slowing down. And it transfers that energy back into the battery. That's what they mean by regen. Um, and it's very different from driving a gasoline vehicle. Uh, and this is that one pedal driving you may have heard of people talk about. So you need to give yourself a bit of time to get used to that driving because you do want regen. It's gonna help get more electricity back into your battery, but it can be kind of weird um, when you're not used to it, especially in the winter time if the conditions are slippery. So just spend a bit of time Driving around some side streets, getting used to that before you really get out on the highway at high speeds and whatnot. Get used to it. So there's that. Um, and then, uh, honestly, I have to say the windshield wipers on the Teslas, at least on the Model 3, it's, it's really goofy. Uh, what I mean by that is the default setting is that the windshield wipers just automatically turn on. Whenever the cameras think that the wipers need to turn on, they turn on. Well, it does a terrible job. That's a safety issue, and I really hope... Tesla fixes this in a software update, but they really don't work well. So really your options are a couple things. That is, on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, you have the little stock, the little uh, knob thing there that, you know, some cars have that little thing there for the windshield wipers. Well, if you push the button in on that left-hand stock on the steering wheel, it's meant to spray the liquid on the windshield, okay? But if you push it really quick, it won't spray any fluid, but it will turn on the windshield wipers just to swipe, you know, two or three times. So that's one way you can use it. Another way you can use it is, yeah, you can touch the screen and tell it to turn on, you know, one, two, three, or four speed. But that's really don't, you don't want to be fiddling with the screen when you're first learning to use the car. And then the third option is if you have the latest firmware, you can, there's two buttons on the steering wheel. And the one on the right you can push it, and that's if you do that, it enables voice commands. So you push it once, and then you just speak to the car and say, turn on windshield wipers. And it'll turn on the windshield wipers. And then you can push it again and say, turn off windshield wipers, and it'll turn it off. So there's a couple ways that you can deal with those goofy windshield wipers. I don't like the automatic setting. doesn't work that well. So hopefully you can get used to that before you get out on the highway. Play with it a bit so you know how to control it so you're comfortable with it. In case you get into, you know, some really rainy or snowy weather, you really don't want to be fiddling driving on a, on a dangerous highway with that. Okay, and then the turn signals. That's a small thing, but the left-hand stock, the one I talked about using for the windshield wipers, if you push it up or if you push it down, that's left and right. Um... But if there's, there's, how do I explain this? If you push the wind, if you push that stock up gently, not, not like hard in a very gentle, small amount of pressure that will turn on your, your blinker just for about two or three seconds. If you hold it up for, and, and kind of harder holding it up, that's like normal blinkers it'll just the blinker will stay on until you actually turn so one is kind of like a temporary turn the other one is like hold the blinker on until i actually switch lanes so that's both for up and down left and right 
I guess that would be right and left. Up is right, down is left, from what I remember. Anyway, you'll figure that out. But get used to the, the turn signals because they're a little bit different from uh, some of the other cars I've driven. Um, all right, so for the rest of these, I'm going to go to the car and uh, bring up this presentation on the car and just show you what I mean by these things. It'll make a bit more sense. All right, so, so we're in the car, and continuing the presentation from here, um, know how to check the tire pressure. Okay, so how do we check the tire pressure? So you see this screen here? You see how there's these dots, three dots? So you just swipe to the side, and you get this view. Now, when you're stationary, you don't see anything, but when you're driving, on this far right dot, you're going to see PSI and it's going to show all four tires and what the pressure is for those tires. Okay, so it's this view here, and again, you just swipe. If I go back to the previous view, you know, I have like the camera, the charging, voice commands. If I scroll over again here, it tells me, um, you know, Recently, I drove this many kilometers for this many minutes. This was my watt hours per kilometer since last charge. I guess it is. Um, so again, come on, swipe, swipe. So this fire screen here is where you're going to see the tire pressure. All right. Um, so that would be item number two. Know how to check your tire pressure. Good, you know, when you go to stop to charge, good to check, just see that you're not losing air, that you don't have some kind of a flat. Good to know sooner than later if you are losing pressure so you can stop somewhere and, and deal with it. Anyway, uh, number three, make sure to use the Tesla navigation when you're going from one location to a charger so that it can precondition the battery as you approach. This will result in faster charging since the battery is warmed up. Okay, so what we mean by that is, if I kind of bring that down there, so you can either from your phone, you can punch in the coordinates of, or, or select in the app, uh, the charging station you're going to, and then you can, in that app, you can say share, click the share button, however your, your, uh, software does that in your phone could be different for iPhone and Android and all that and you can send the coordinates to and you would pick the Tesla app but once it does whether you do it that way or whether you just do it from here and you go navigate and punch in the address where the supercharger is what happens then is the app says okay he's going to a charging station so as you start getting close to that charging station the Tesla will start pre-warming your battery so that when you get there to charge your battery's not cold it'll charge faster so you'll be sitting there for less time so that's really what I mean by that okay so getting back to the browser oh great have to reload it again and scroll down okay hey so we talked about number three, making sure you punch into the Tesla navigation system, the charging station you're going to, so preconditions. Number four, set up the apps, apps on here, as soon as you can, so you can enjoy them when you're driving. Things like Spotify, what do I mean by that? So let's say I go music, and then drag this up you'll see all kinds of options here and by the way if you you know you can set up your usb stick for century mode but there's also you can create a i think a music folder on your drive and copy you know mp3 files and then you'll see this usb option show up if you don't do that it won't show up you can pick that and then you can play songs off your usb drive or ssd drive whatever anyway that's for another video so Let's say you want to do Spotify. So there's Spotify right there. When you first click this, there'll be like a login screen. You know, before you leave the dealership, punch in your account, 
if you already have a Spotify account, your username, your password, log in. It'll bring in all your playlists. Uh, and then you can play tunes. Like there's a great sound system in here. Set it up. Also, you could preset up some radio stations if there's radio stations you like, right? Anyway, so you can set those up. You can pair your phone to this and play Bluetooth from your phone. Um, karaoke, I think, just works out of the box. This any music option, it's like the built-in music thing that comes with Tesla. It's not the greatest, but in a pinch, you could use that to drive home. Set up that app. What else, what else can you set up? Well, down here, if I pick on this icon again, there's entertainment. And you know, you want to set, you could do this probably when you stop at a charging station, maybe not as critical. Why is it doing this? Maybe not as critical to do before you leave the dealership, but again, set up your Netflix account. You can set up your Google account so that it knows the channels you subscribe to and YouTube and all that kind of thing. If you use Twitch, same thing, get all set up. But I would do that at a charging station, honestly. You know, your first, like I did at Hope, is when I set it up. Watch the movies while you're charging, get some food, all that kind of thing. All right, back to the browser. All right, we're back inside. So those are the Tesla specific tips. And that is pretty much it for this video. Um, those are sort of uh, not an exhaustive list at all, but just, you know, things that I thought of that hopefully would make your experience a very pleasant one, especially for a long journey. Um, you might want to bring some snack food when you leave Vancouver with you in case you don't want to stop somewhere and you have enough charge, you want to move on to the next one. Just, you know, some munchies, maybe some drinks to stay hydrated. You never know if you're going to have a breakdown, so it's good to have those things anyway, just in case. And, uh, yeah, so thanks for listening, and until we have the next video, see you later.